Now let's look at how different variations comes in different antibody molecules during this process. And we already know that somatic hypermutation plays its role in this diversification. Let's see how it works by understanding gene organization and synthesis of heavy chain. To better understand antibody diversity, we need to understand its genetic sequence first. As for heavy chain, we know that each class of immunoglobulin exhibit different type of heavy chain, like mu for IgM, gamma for IgG, alpha for IgA, delta for IgD, and epsilon for IgE. But all these types of heavy chains have similar genetic sequence. Only difference is in their constant reach in gene segment. The heavy chains of immunoglobulin are comprised of three sets of gene segments, namely L, D, and J other than V and C gene segments. Here L for leader, D for diversity, G for joining, V for variable, and C for constant gene segments. Gene segments exist in sets or groups that are arrays of different versions of that gene segment. For example, six different J gene segments constitute the JH set. The gene segments for heavy chain reside on chromosome number 14 in the human genome and approximately 50 VH, 25 DH, and six JH gene segments are present in the heavy chain locus. This slide is representing the germline organization of the heavy chain locus on chromosome 14. These gene segments undergo multiple rearrangement or recombinations that are called somatic recombinations. And the process involved here is called somatic hypermutation. Here, in somatic hypermutation, the word somatic comes from the fact that this process is limited to somatic cells only and not germ cells. That means it is not transmitted to next generation. Mutation means change in DNA sequence and hyper because it is a hyperactive process. So somatic hypermutation is a molecular process that brings about changes at certain points in genetic sequence. That ultimately brings about changes in the gene expression and thus protein synthesis. These changes then produces antibodies with different antigen binding capacities or affinities. So those that have good affinity with antigen will work efficiently. And so it'll be selected and preferred over those with less binding capacities. Let's see in details how genetic rearrangement occurs in heavy chain. We know that heavy chain is composed of both variable and constant region domains. So here, the variable region of heavy chain is encoded by VD and J gene segments. L segment here leads the whole process and constant region is encoded by simply C segment. This C segment has set of genes for all immunoglobulin classes. Now here two types of rearrangement occurs. First in constant region that is also called as class switching and second in variable region as well called as VTJ recombination. And the complex of enzymes involved in this process are called EEJ recombinase. Recombination in C region will determine the class and subclass of immunoglobulin, while VDJ recombination will determine its affinity towards antigen. So both these genetic rearrangements are basically responsible for diversification of antibodies. First, let's look at the recombination at constant region or class switching. To explain recombinations in constant region, I will first denote variable region as single gene segment here, in which there are continuous mutation taking place side by side, but we will discuss it later. In constant region genes of heavy chain, constant region exons for IgM, that is mu, delta for IgD, gamma for IgG, Epsilon for IgE and alpha for IgA subtypes are present. There are also some other regions that are named as switch regions or S regions. S regions are repetitive DNA sequences that are found upstream of each CH exon except C delta. Breaks are introduced into the DNA of two S regions and fusion of the S regions leads to a rearranged CH locus 
The DNA between the two switch regions is excised and forms an epistomal circle. For example, here if there occurs the deletional mutation of CH exons for IgM and IgD, then the variable region will be joined with the CH exons for IgG, and so the antibody produced will belong to the class of IgG. Similarly, if this switching is between S regions upstreaming new and gamma exons, then it will give rise to the antibody of class IgE. And if switching is between thus region upstreaming mu and epsilon exon, the antibody body formed will belong to class IJ. So the fact is, whatever CH exons binds with the variable region, the antibody will be named after that, as it belong to that particular class. Now, in case when there is no antigen, and so no recombination is needed in constant region, then the first antibody produced by B cell will be IgM as there is no switching and so the CH exons attached to variable region is C nu. So the antibody produced will be IgM. But once an antigen invades the body, now B cell has to produce specific antibody against that. So once it gets activated and even T cell confirms the foreign antigen, then it has to produce antibody accordingly. Here together with different VDJ, recombinations that are taking place simultaneously, this switching will continue. And it will produce IgG, IgA, IgE, and membrane-bound IgD, along with IgM as well. And with different VDJ combinations, the one that fits well with the antigen, for example, IgG will be selected. And so B cell will start to produce number of clones of that particular antibody as it is found effective against that particular invading antigen. Hence, this process is also known as class switching. As during this process, an activated B cell changes its antibody production from IgM to any other class of immunoglobulins. So class switch recombination events allow the same antibody specificity that is concerned with variable regions to be associated with different antibody classes and subclasses. And as it produces different constant regions, it also initiates different effector mechanisms against that foreign antigen. So after learning about gene rearrangement in constant region or class switching, let's learn about gene recombination in variable regions, also known as VDG recombination. As we know, approximately 50 VH, 25 DH, and 6 JH, gene segments are present in the heavy chain locus on chromosome 14 that codes for variable region domain of the heavy chain. Here the V segment determine the variable region, G segments joins the variable and constant segments, and the D segment encodes amino acids in the third hypervariable region. During VDJ recombination, in the first step, DJ rearrangement occurs, where one of the D segment recombine with one of the J segment. For example, D1 combines with J1, with the intervening DNA from D1 to J1 being looped and cut out. Now your second rearrangement takes place, where V segment recombines with the already combined DG segment. This is called VDJ rearrangement. In this example, V1 segment is combined with D1J1 segment with the loss of the intervening DNA in the form of loop. Now this creates a complete V region exon. And here rearrangement completes. From this step, process of transcription starts. That forms a primary RNA transcript. This primary RNA is made of both exons and introns that are the coding and non-coding regions of DNA, respectively. Here in this example, this primary RNA transcript comprise of V1D1G1 region or complete V region exon, remaining G segments and constant region. That is C mu for IgM. Now here, another important process takes place that is called RNA splicing. And we know that in this process, the introns or non-coding gene segments are spliced or removed with the coding regions or only exons left behind. 
In this way, variable region combines with the constant region. Here in this example, V1D1J1 segment is now combined with a constant C mu Xn, with the L region that was constantly leading the process. The RNA now formed is called messenger RNA. This messenger RNA is then undergo process of translation and is then translated into respective protein molecule. Here, leader peptide sequence also gets removed and the variable region recombination now produce variable region domain. Wow, after following combinations in constant region, it now produce a constant region domain. In this way, it give rise to two heavy chains with both variable and constant regions. But we know that the antigen binding site of an immunoglobulin molecule is composed of both heavy and light chain. The phenomenon of these recombination events is similar in both light and heavy chains with few variations. Let's try to understand these genetic recombination in light chain as well in our next section.